Hi everyone, welcome back to another What I Eat in a Day. I know that many of you may be new to trying out veganism since it's the new year. You may even be giving Veganuary a go. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Vegan Amino, which is a great app for vegans, especially new vegans. You can interact and communicate with others. I love chatting to you guys on there. There are public chats you can join with different topics such as veganism in your country or your city. City, transitioning vegans and so many other topics. You can follow people and then you can see what each other posts. You can also discuss animal welfare, vegan families and lifestyle as well as the recipes and so many of the recipes look amazing. I love the sound of this pasta lentil casserole, that's definitely my kind of comfort food. You know how much I love sushi and these surprising maki rolls look incredible. And I also came across this amazing vegan vegan mayonnaise recipe. It's free to download, I'll leave a link in the description box. Come over and follow me, my username is Jess Petition. I'm following you all back and I'm sharing my videos and some recipes on there. On to what I ate one day this week and for breakfast I made a mixed berry porridge. For this I first took one cup of the Nutri Seed Berry Porridge and then I added that to a small pan with one and a half cups of almond milk. I put that on a low heat and let it warm up to a gentle simmer. I just make sure to keep stirring it so that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. And once it was done, I placed that in a bowl and then I added on some raspberries and cherries and I also topped it with some flaked almonds. This was honestly the best bowl of porridge I've had for a really long time. It was so creamy and flavorful. It has added white mulberries, dried cranberries, goji berries and acai berry in the porridge itself as well as the raspberries and the cherries that I added on top. Really, really fruity, warming and filling. I only had a little something between breakfast and lunch and that was a handful of olives. To make these zesty olives, I placed a handful of olives in a dish and then I grated over some lemon zest some orange zest and then I squeezed over the juice of half the lemon. These honestly taste so amazing and it brings so much flavour to the olives. If they're left to kind of marinate for a bit longer, they taste even better and as I've said before, olives are just one of my favourite go-to snacks but I love adding extras to them. For lunch I made some avocado pesto pasta. For this I first added one avocado into my food processor and blended that up with two cloves of garlic, the juice of one lemon, three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, one tablespoon of olive oil and some salt and black pepper until it was smooth. I then added in one large handful of fresh chopped basil leaves and I blended it again. I then took one cup of whole wheat pasta and I added that to a pan of boiling salt water and then once it was cooked, I just rinsed and drained it. I then added it back to the pan, added in the avocado pesto and gave it a really good mix together. I then placed that in a bowl, I topped it with some fresh shredded basil and a wedge of lemon which I just squeezed over the pasta. This avocado pesto is amazing for so many things, I love using it as a dip, as a kind of dressing on salads, as a spread but it makes the most amazing creamy pasta sauce too. If you have any leftovers or if you want to make Double, you can store it in the fridge for up to three days in an airtight container, any longer than that and it tends to go a little bit brown. You can also add in some pine nuts too if you like, but I feel that it works perfectly fine without them. For an afternoon snack I had some rice cakes with sun-dried tomatoes and dill. I just took two rice cakes on a plate and then I topped both with some chopped sun-dried tomatoes, a little sprinkle of nutritional yeast and some fresh chopped dill. Then I finished by seasoning them with some black pepper. Again, rice cakes are just such a great snack. These ones are sesame seed rice cakes which are perfect for both sweeter toppings like nut butters and banana slices or savoury options like this one and you can get so creative with what you add on top. There's so many things that work. For dinner, I made a creamy coconut, butternut squash, chickpea and okra curry. For this, I first added one teaspoon of coconut oil to a large pan on a low heat. I then added in one teaspoon of mustard seeds and I just let those heat up until they began to pop. I next added in one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of ground coriander, 
a teaspoon of turmeric and one tablespoon of garam masala and I mixed that all together until it almost formed a paste. Whilst that was heating up I finally chopped one white onion then I added that to the pan coated it in the spices and I fried it off until it was soft. I next minced in three cloves of garlic and I fried that off and then I added in one teaspoon of ginger paste but you could use fresh grated ginger. Next I cut up half a butternut squash into cubes and I added that to the pan. I fried those off and then I added in one cup of chickpeas and also one cup of frozen okra. You could use fresh okra. After about three minutes I then added in one one can of full fat coconut milk and then I also added in one can of tinned chopped tomatoes. I gave that a good mix, I brought that up to a boil and then I turned down the heat so that it was left to gently simmer and I placed the lid on to cover it. In that time I cooked up some brown rice which took around 20 to 25 minutes so that's how long the curry had to simmer. Once the rice was cooked I just drained it, served it up and then I gave the curry one final stir and then I served that up on top of the rice. I topped it with some fresh chopped parsley, that's all I had, but coriander would also work really well and that was it. If you wanted you could replace the butternut squash for potato or even sweet potato. I found the okra in the supermarket and that's what made me want to put this recipe together, but you could use spinach carrots or even cauliflower instead of it. The flavours of this curry was so amazing. It's not too spicy, there's no kind of chilli elements to it and it's really really creamy with the coconut milk and the chopped tomatoes. This actually makes four portions in total so the rest can be placed in an airtight container and refrigerated for up to a day or it can be frozen for up to two weeks. And then for dessert I had a vanilla and chocolate chia pudding. I just made a single small pot of the this and I just added three tablespoons of chia seeds, half a teaspoon of vanilla powder, a third of a cup of almond milk and one tablespoon of maple syrup to the pot and I mixed it all together well and then I grated over some vegan dark chocolate as like a layer on top. Don't worry whatever falls onto the clean counter gets added into it doesn't go to waste. I then placed that in the fridge, it was set within about 30 minutes and it just made for a really quick and easy dessert. I love the combination of vanilla and chocolate together but this wasn't too sickly sweet it was just really delicious. And that is it for another day on my plate, be sure to check out the vegan amino app and as always, all of the recipes mentioned in this video will be written up in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!